All right, what's up guys? Today's video is going to be a very important one because I know that most of you who are watching this channel uh, is not trading full time. You have a, you know, a job on the side and you're trading as a hobby. So today's video is going to be about that. How can you trade consistently profitable with having a full time job? All right. So right after the intro, we'll jump into that. All right, welcome everyone. So today we have Dirk from Prime XPT Academy, and we are going to talk about how you are going to be able to trade and learn how to trade while holding a full-time job. All right, Dirk, how's it going? Welcome. Good, good. Hello, everybody. Good to be here again with a burp's nest and. Uh, yeah, really, I think a uh, topic today that probably for, for most people, for 95% uh, of our of the audience that wants to trade, that maybe has done trading before, is going to be very important. How can you do that, you know, when you still have a job, 8 to 10 or maybe more hours every day to attend to? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very important uh, conversation. I think we, we don't talk about this often enough because... You know, uh, most of the markets are built up on, you know, mostly retail traders and uh, not, you know, that that's that's really the uh, the uh, the biggest part. And that's why, you know, when we read, you know, 90 percent or even maybe 99 percent of everyone who tries this will fail. And obviously we're not talking about we're mostly talking about retail traders at at that uh, at that point. And I think. One of the reasons why many people fail at this is because they have uh, have uh, unrealistic expectations on on what to expect when when starting to trade, and uh, the fact that you need you need to plan your trading uh, you know ahead of time, and especially if you have a a job. So you've been trading for a while, you know. You you I think you said you're. You have about 20 years of experience yeah. in the market, right? 20, 24 years now this year, yeah. Yeah. So it's, maybe uh, maybe longer than, than some of you guys out there uh, are actually old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I think you, you, you know a little bit about trading and you know probably quite a lot about the the struggles with um, I mean we talked about this right before starting the recording that you need to be you need to be available like we talked about how we record a lot of youtube videos and there's a lot of editing and there's a lot of time that gets spent on stuff that's not trading and i do feel like some days i feel like uh, i've missed trading opportunities because i didn't have I was just not available and, and for me you know trading is like a huge part about trading is uh, being available whenever the market gives you the opportunities. And that's a huge problem when working because obviously a lot of people are not able to, and you probably shouldn't be trading from your phone as well, but a lot of people are probably not able to even use their phone or use a laptop or a computer during work time, and they're not able to trade during work time. So how, how do you get around that, right? Do you have any tips and tricks on how how to get around that yes i mean short answer of course it is uh, possible to to trade and also do so successfully while still working a full-time job and i think the example you just said like you said what we talked about before we started recording this that uh, even our day and, and i mean we call ourselves uh, to some extent professional traders or full-time traders gets eaten up by a lot of youtube content we do for example and we like doing that of course we like to talk about the markets mm -hmm. and and share our expertise and i share really the same experience sometimes that i sit there i'm editing or recording a video and then half hour late i see ah oh, i missed an entry there in in the trade I normally would have entered and now it's too late to enter the trade and i, I think the, the lesson from the, the yeah, lesson really here is that yeah. you have sorry yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead i mean i just want to say it's, it's extreme, insanely frustrating yeah. um that's and and i think that is the frustration that you feel when you see that mistrade i think 
it's it's key to manage that that emotion as well yeah it's it's about emotion i th i think it's also about um managing your trading your style of trading so uh, for example if i know that i only have maybe half hour or one hour maybe even just 15 minutes in the morning that i can spend on studying the markets looking at certain charts looking at the assets that I'm interested in trading at the moment, uh, then I have to adapt my trading style to that. And I, I think one thing that back then, when I still was working another job full time and still was trading, one thing that always helped me very much is to really concentrate uh, charting wise on the essentials. And that for me is support and resistance levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, and like pre-prepare my trades uh, in the morning, for example, if I see like, hey, there might be a resistance at, let's say, 50,000 Bitcoin at the moment. If a market goes up during the day, there, this is where I want to sell Bitcoin. This is where I want to short Bitcoin uh, because I, I think there's a good level of resistance there. And I can pre-prepare this with limit orders or even I can pre-prepare breakouts with stop buy or stop sell orders. Uh, then I can close my laptop or... or you know, power down my my mobile phone or whatever I do this kind of analysis, and uh, go about with my workday. And when I come home late at night, I can just see okay where my orders executed or not. But important here is really that I have to have everything pre prepared. Do not fall for the trap uh, you indicated that just now, uh, lip um, of oh you know I can do this during my lunch break uh, where I'm eating and then I'm going to place some cool trades on my mobile phone with all the great apps that are available outside. This is probably not going to work. Yeah. I remember when I when I had a job I, I worked uh, I worked in healthcare and it was kind of relaxed because it was a a a, a, a place where where uh, it wasn't really any uh, heavy healthcare job. It was just more more lax and I'm, uh, taking care of of uh, like mentally un, un, unstable uh, people. But it was a very social job, so I had access to to phone and and that kind of stuff. So we we could be sitting in in a couch and I could get an alert. So I I I could like I had the opportunity to actually enter orders for a trade. Mm -hmm. But after getting an alert, right? But but I remember a huge problem for me was I had I had a journal and I I had one uh, one part of that journal said if the trade if if the if the trade was based on analysis based on phone or computer and if the analysis was based on on my phone I shouldn't just I, I shouldn't take that trade. I, I could only take the trades where the TA was based on what I did at my my desktop in the morning before going to work, mm. right? Sometimes you might be on your lunch break and you're looking at charts and you're like, oh, this looks like a good setup, but the screen is so small and you're not going to be able to get a good picture of what's actually happening. So for me, like what you said here, planning, planning in advance is, is, is very, very important because if you do if, if you do have the availability to actually enter orders on your lunch break or whatever, having a couple of setups that you're monitoring uh, that you found during the markets and then setting alerts and you know exactly what the position size should be, where you're going to enter, where the stop loss is. If you have that written up, I don't really see a huge problem of entering orders on mobile if you have an alert, right? Yeah. But it's, it's really... Um, if you have the opportunity to do the trades on desktop uh, in, in your office or whatever, I, I'm very, very much prefer uh, prefer that. And I think you you need to, if you're really serious about trading, and you you're, you you have a full time job, and the uh, the purpose of that job is to pay your bills and save up capital to start trading. Uh, if you're really serious about that, I think you need to view trading as a part-time job while, while still having that full-time job so before you go to work you have a trading session when you get home from work or or in the evening you also have a trading session so you're gonna have two jobs right mm. and, yeah, and and don't so, underestimate that that uh, that's going to you know take a toll on you as well it's really a trading is a job it's a profession yeah. it's not uh, like 
we get it spoon fed sometimes by social media out there, you know, but it's like super easy. And we hear all those stories about great successes. But usually uh, the people that are successful are so for a reason. And the biggest variable in that equation is they are very diligent uh, and very professional about what they are doing. And uh, if you do, if you are doing this part time, and maybe we can also look at some possible setups here uh, shortly uh, after this. And and you know, don't also fall for the trap that you need to trade every day. Yeah, a lot about trading is waiting. Most of the time, you're going to spend waiting for this one perfect setup that has a high risk reward ratio for you. And this can, yeah. if you're doing this part time and you're, for example, basing your trades uh, off daily charts or maybe even weekly charts, you know, there are days, sometimes days or maybe even weeks that go by without you entering a single trade. But then when the trade comes, you got to be there. You got to be ready. Yeah, I think that is that is. Um... That that is both the 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 beauty of trading when you get that right, but it's also what's really frustrating about trading because yeah. it's it's like you need to be available. Like I always say, you need to be uh, avail make yourself available to the market. You know the 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 Mark Douglas trading in the zone always says, you know, make yourself available, and okay. and uh, you you should be able to. Freely flow in and out of the, the the market flow and take the opportunities that the that, that the market gives you. But if you're not available when the opportunity gives you market, you're gonna miss those opportunities. And the the, the the faster you accept that, the better, right? You have to accept the fact that you are not going to be able to take as many trades as a professional trader does because you simply do not have the time and you're not available. So for a person who does um for a person who 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 just does trade with a full time job, I think there's two uh, two options, right? Either you go go and you should only choose one, in my opinion, to focus on. Either you go like you you take only swing trades based on four hour closes in the evening or the morning, or daily closes, right? Or you if you have like one or two hours in the morning, maybe one or two hours in the evening, you could scalp the lower time frames, right? Because in that two hour period you could get a couple of scalps in but if you're a new trader you shouldn't be scalping you should probably yeah. focus on on swing trading right but i think i think you, you you really said something very very important here and that is the fact that you don't trade too much you're not going to be able to take a lot of trades and if you're a swing trader one like one good trade a month is better than 10 bad ones a week right Absolutely, if yeah. you make you know, if you make 5% in a month, you're way better than a lot of traders out there. You know, if you if you, if you take one trade and that trade increases your portfolio by 5% in a month, one trade, you're, you're, you're pretty profitable if you have a decent enough, uh, enough capital. Yeah. But, you know, and, and that's something I've really been seeing in my own career is the less I trade, the more profitable I become. So... I think it's very, very important to to understand that even if you miss ten trades during your uh, work day, you you wait ten days or five days, and you're gonna see that that setup will activate when you're available, right? Yeah, and um, really don't don't over trade. I mean, just by the nature of it, every trade, uh, every trade you enter, you are in, in loss first because you have to go through the spread. Uh, because you have to pay maybe a commission uh, also. Uh, even if it's a small commission, it's going to put you at loss first. So this is always something the trade needs to make up first. Uh, same for, for closing your trade. Maybe you have to pay a commission. You have to go through the spread again. So you have to always earn that. And then very important, if you are able to make 5% a month, I mean, with 60% a year, yeah, uh, this is yeah, exactly. insanely, yeah. insanely good already. Really, you are would be really... A, probably considered by by something like a hedge fund already uh, a top tier trader and you always have to set your expectation right here because you have to compare what you are uh, able to make a month or on a yearly basis to what the risk free uh, return is at the moment now the risk free return at the moment at least here in europe is 0% uh, 
this is what banks usually pay you for your saving accounts. Some banks, you know, even charge you for having money on your saving accounts if you have too much money lying around there. So this is the risk-free return. And anything you can make on top of that, uh, you do so by taking some risk. So if you are able to make 60% uh, a year uh, with decent risk metrics, of course, that is, you know, it, it, 60% a year when you have a downswing of 99% of is also not very good. But if you make 60% a year and maybe uh, you have a downswing of 20% or 15%, then you are really, really amazing. But uh, this is, I think, for a beginner trader a little bit in the future already. First thing yeah. you want to train yourself is not to lose money. It sounds, I, I, whenever I say this, usually people react like, oh, yeah, but I'm not trading to... to uh, lose money or not lose money. I want to win. Yeah, but the first step of becoming a really good trader and somewhat professional retail trader is to not lose money. If you've reached that level, you're already farther down the road than 95% of other beginner traders out there. And I also think it's, it's I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and and like you said, and I, I highly, if you're really, really new to this whole thing, I highly, highly recommend stick to daily charts. Pick maybe mm. one, two, three assets, for example, Bitcoin, Euro dollar, maybe an index, the S&P 500 uh, or gold or something like this uh, that you monitor on a daily basis that you kind of get accustomed for. Over time, you also develop like a feeling how, how the market moves at certain hours and uh, in the time. And uh, then draw some, re, um, some support and resistance lines in there. You really scan the chart from top to bottom, see, okay, where were zones where the market reversed? Uh, and and draw your lines there and then when you see in the morning okay the market is approaching a zone like this this is the zone where you can play uh, place your orders and automatically if you place orders at zones of support and resistance they usually go hand in hand with an extremely good re risk reward ratio for you so normally if the market then reverses there uh, you can get multiple times uh, the wins of what you have to risk because you can place, you know, your stop loss for that position just, just slightly over the support or resistance. Yeah, and I also think uh, I, it, you have to develop a you know, buy a system or read read about a system or develop a system on your own. I highly, you know, recommend trying to develop a system on your own through back testing and forward testing and all that. But uh, trying to develop or find a system where you're not like the system I'm trading is based on confirmation before entry. So I need entry confirmation uh, with four hour closes before I entry enter. That is maybe not the best way of trading uh, if, if you're trading with a full time job. So my, my the students that I'm learning, you know, teaching the system to, I'm teaching them this with a goal that hopefully they'll be able to sometime in the future become professional traders and use this system. If you are trading as a hobby or, or trading as a part-time thing, maybe look at having blind orders or limit orders uh, as part of your system. Because just let's, like you say, you have a higher probable highly probable resistance area right you're looking at the chart you're looking at the daily and you say you know what this level hasn't been tested in in a week right and it's been acting as support for five years or, or mm -hmm. you know five years and this is the first retest after a breakdown in five years what is the probability of this level being resistance well quite high in my opinion quite high i would say the the probability probably higher than, than 50% if the overall trend is, is is bearish. So you can put orders here with a clear invalidation level and just, just using a very, very simple um, method of, of like a break and retest strategy with clear horizontal support and resistance area, just having a very simple system like that could probably put you around 40% win rate, in my opinion. And the average R, of course, then needs to be over over 2R at least. But if you have that, you're, you're going to be profitable, right? Uh, now, if you wait for confirmation, if you, if you wait for that level to get hit and then only enter orders when there's actually a rejection, you might up that win rate, hmm. but because of the fact that you're not available, you're not going to be able to take the trade. So 
I do think there's a slight advantage to, to using limit orders when you're not as available, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. You you have to use limit order so when you're not available. Uh, this is what I meant, and and I think your your example just is a very beautiful one. I, I mean, let's look again, for example, at Bitcoin. Uh, this area when we were slumping down below forty thousand. Uh, now the first quarter here of two thousand twenty-two. Uh, we maybe want to want to yeah. Maybe wanna let's let's maybe the, yeah. Let's watch that on the chart. Can you share? Mike? Yeah. Do you, you, yeah. That's oh, yeah. yours. Okay, great. Here. So, re really just plain, simple Bitcoin chart here, candlesticks without any additional uh, layover. And what I meant is here, when we came all the way down here, let me get the brush here. Uh, so, from our all time high at 69, we slumped all the way down here to, to 33,000, right? Around about 33,000. And this was a zone. Uh, of support in a downtrend we developed uh, earlier that year. You guys remember when we had also after the slump down in May, this, this large uh, sideways market uh, un until July, until we broke out. So this area here between uh, 30,000 and 33,000 acted as an extreme good level of support. And just by noticing that and by knowing, okay, from 2021, we have this, oh, let me make this one green maybe. So it's a support, of course. We had this, uh, the, the bear market came to a halt back then. Just by knowing this, I knew already, okay, there's a high probability that this zone of support is going to uh, continue to act as a zone of support. So what I could have done uh, there, I could have just placed limit buy orders here. For example, at mm -hmm. 33, 32, 31, or maybe even 30,000, uh, in the expectation that the market is at least going to reverse and maybe by 10 or 20 percent, which it did. Uh, and uh, I, I could have simply placed my stop loss slightly under 30,000 here. And then I would have had something like uh, a risk maybe of, of three or four thousand uh, US dollars per Bitcoin I, I'm trading. But my upside is uh, would have been uh, something like six or 10 or 12,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. So. This is what I mean by playing with uh, support and resistance level. Obviously, you need to do some more research there. And obviously, you also you know, need to be a little bit brave uh, because on the way down and, and when you look a lot of social media, everybody is going to become salty and people will call out, oh, we're going below 30, we're going back to 10,000 and so on and so forth. You, you know, don't fall for this FUD. It's really important that you make up your own mind then and that you stick to your trading plan. And in this, this is really yeah. a good example of, you know, you, you would have placed your order here, you would have closed, you would have defined your stop loss, you would have defined your take profit, you would have closed your laptop, and then you can just go to work. And if you, when you come back at night from work, you see whether your order has been executed or not. There's not so much to it. And if you wait for chances like this patiently, uh, chances like this will present itself a couple of times a year. And you can do this, of course, for any asset out there. It doesn't necessarily have to be Bitcoin. Uh, it doesn't really matter by the end of the day. But if you wait patiently for this, it's enough, like you just said earlier, then to have maybe one trade a month. So I want to I want to show you an example on on my chart. So let's uh, pull that up. And I think th this is a beautiful example that you just showed right here. Uh, you just tr try to find the high time frame support and resistance area, and try to basically you're you're anticipating the the levels to keep acting as as support and resistance. And it sounds so simple, but it it works. All right, that's how the market works. Yeah will act as resistance and support will act as support and when you have a trend the the um, the probability of that trend continuing to be trending is well you know trade trade with the trend that that's all it, it was all the it same is. just now no I mean we broke out over 40,000 in Bitcoin on last Sunday uh, which is very weird in my opinion <laughs> to do that on a Sunday but <laughs> yeah. nevertheless uh, that would have been a good example where you could have, for example, work with a stop buy order to enter the market when it breaks out. Yeah. Right. So I want, I want to show you this. This is not a uh, this is not a perfect example because, as you can see here, this is on on Ethereum, and as you can see here, it uh, it's a downtrend, right? 
uh, so you, you we're going to look at a long and it's a downtrend. So honestly, this this would have higher probability and work out much better if if it were in an uptrend. And that's why that's what I want to to recommend. Right. You look at assets that are giving you a setup in um, with the trend, right, with the trend. It will will increase your profitability much more most likely if you, if you have that but the way i traded in in the past when i had a job was i only traded using uh, horizontal support and resistances if you have a horizontal support right here you wait for the breakout so i have an alert right here you have the breakout and then if you see a nice retest here i just mm. put orders right on the on on the level and then stop loss below the, the last swing that broke the level and TP would be, if it's a 2R up to the last high, that would be my TP. So let's look at an example here on, on Ethereum, right? So we have a breakout on Ethereum of, of this level right here. And you could kind of draw a level, uh, something, you know, something like this, right? But in this example right here, we're going to be focusing on just this level right here, right? So if price starts to, uh, starts to retrace back down to this level, I want to be looking at a setup that looks something something like this. And then you have a like one, let's say 1.9 up to that level. Now depending on your win rate, that would be sufficient for for a trade. And if I see price starting to come down, which is doing right here. So let's say if it breaks breaks this area here, um, I'm gonna put in I'm going to put put in orders for for this setup, and that's that's my trade, right? And as you can see, it comes down, hits that level, and and then reverses up should should reverse up to TP like that. And that is just a very simple. You can look at the you could let, let let's say you have an overall uptrend, and like this is the trend. That you're trading, you have a very clear breakout. Let's say that this this resistance here is up here, right? So you have a good confluence here on the higher time frames. Now, of course, it's not perfect, but let's just imagine you move this up here. It's a very strong support. You're gonna anticipate this to act as support. So what do you do? You put buy orders here and stop loss below, like below this structure right here and TP at the last rejection. So that's how I traded, right? And actually surprisingly profitable. Like I was actually surprised how well this worked. This is so simple. Yeah, you have but support and resistance, right? This is like, <laughs> I mean, it, it really, it's uh, sometimes it's mind blowing, you know, how simple it sounds, uh, yeah. especially if you're a beginner doing all this, but this is the universal truth, how markets moves markets break yeah. through uh, areas of resistance and usually what happens when is exactly what you sh uh, showed uh, showed there that the market goes up and then comes down again to test this former zone of resistance which now of course acts as a support mm -hmm. and this is where you want to place your order then uh, and like you just did you are going with a trend there you know we have an uptrend on the high time frame mm -hmm. short term uptrend at least in ethereum there and the market is breaking through a resistance and then coming back to test this resistance which acts as a support this is exactly a beautiful example in my opinion really uh, also and, and with a risk reward uh, risk reward yeah. ratio you don't need to risk a lot to gain double the, the amount or almost double the amount 1.9 here i think you said it was of what you you have been risking and you just need to be <laughs> successful with this in like 40 percent of of all time yeah. or even lower than this to already make a bank you know and you know i i want to i want to show this as well because a lot of like it's um a lot of people see this and I'm I'm telling them like I'm 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 giving them this and I'm just like if, if you if you use consistent, right? It, do this over and over and over again, you're gonna be profitable. But it's it's just not it's, it's not easy. It's not easy because you have that uh, psychology, uh, like trading psychology come into play and you're just gonna make mistake. That's a given, right? But if you take this this setup right here and Th this is how I started like five years ago. This is how I started. And now if you look at, if you remove everything from the shot right here, right? You remove everything here from this setup. And what do you see? Well, you see the exact same thing pretty much, mm. right? 
Like that's the retest. That's where you want to have orders and then stop loss. Well, you know, it's not a perfect example because stop loss kind of needs to be down here, but it's the same thing. You have a breakout retest, but I only enter now when there's confirmation. And then you add all of this and it's like, you just have more stuff that through the years I've added to, to find confluence, right? Of, of this. And, but but you don't need this. You don't need all of these indicators mm. to find a break and retest. So I, I think I think that is like very, very important when you're starting out or 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 you have a full-time job and you want to try trading. Keep it simple. Uh, keep it simple and only take the obvious, obvious setups and remember that support will act as support and resistance will act as resistance. And if it doesn't, you'll get stopped out and, and you just move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, and it's automatically as you evolve then as a trader. So when you have nailed down, if there's something like nailing, uh, you know, a market down, this of course not. But if you feel comfortable with this uh, simple truth of, of confluence, of uh, support and resistance and, and how they behave in trending markets. And uh, then sooner or later, automatically, you automatically you will start adding more stuff, you know, to that yeah. uh, gives you another level of insight in the market, whether it's moving averages, whether it's something like a stochastic you probably have down there uh, on your chart. Um, don't do too much in the beginning, you know, do not try to throw a bunch of indicators at a chart and, and, and uh, yeah. try to read something from it. It's not going to work probably. Keep it simple. But I think, I think, yeah. But I think every, everyone, like everyone will do that. Like everyone's doing that. I mean, I you, 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 you will add everything. Right. And like, I, 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 people ask me like, what's the best indicator? And obviously like the best indicator is the one that works, that works for you. And the one that like gives that the one that works for you. Um, and when it comes to like you, you said uh, uh, a bit bit earlier, the the universal truth of markets is that they're ranging or trending, and a breakout level will usually get retested. And it's like it's so easy for us to say this and understand why and how it looks. But I remember in the beginning, I kept asking like I was in different communities, and I always kept asking like. Does it really like? Why do you wait for a retest? Why? Why does it have to retest the level? And today, like, I don't know why, and I don't care why. I just know that it happens more often than not, and yeah. you just have to go with that. It, it's it's just. Um, so I think um, just keeping it very simple and looking at that, uh, looking at those those patterns. And, and another thing I really wanted to ask you is is. Uh, do you think it's if you have a job you're working 40 hours a week or more you have a very demanding job you have no no access to 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 a phone or a computer during work time not even during your lunch break and it's just a lot to do and you might have a family you're busy is it possible to be a professional trader i mean a, a profitable trader not a professional one of profitable. course it is. I mean, uh, look at uh, what you are showing just now. It's a four-hour time frame, I think. Um, maybe do it on a daily time frame. It's, you can have your orders ready and, and you'll get good at, at, at seeing those uh, levels of support and resistance very quickly. So let's say like a month down the road, you probably just need to spend like 10 minutes every morning to, to yeah. see those uh, and, and get your orders ready. And when you have your orders ready, like in this example, you could have placed your limit order. Uh, at the zone that formerly was the resistance, uh, you know, would have known exactly where to place your stop loss. You would have known, okay, my take profit has to be there. At, at this level, the risk reward ratio checks out nice, minimum maybe 1.5 you want to have there. And uh, when you close your laptop and when you go to work, no need to monitor the market anymore. It's, it's, it's really simple like this. And don't, don't, um, don't be mistaken. If you look, for example, at institutional traders, so the guys that sit at hedge funds or banks, this is exactly what a lot of them are also doing. They are just, uh, you know, because they, they they get to do this like eight to 10 hours a day, so they can do this also on lower time frames. But it's not like most of them that they have like, you know, magic indicators or stuff like this that give them an advantage. Um, it's really also they... They, they have to hone this universal truth that markets are trending or ranging. 
and adapt mm. their strategies accordingly. So do that. And if you nail that down, you are already, in my opinion, at least like 60% down the road of becoming a professional trader. Yeah. And also you, you said like you, um, like at the, at the same time as, as not being available when, when you probably need to is a weakness. I also think that when you, when you put those limit orders in and you go to work and you're going to be gone for the next, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours, that's a strength. All right. That yeah. is something, something very good because 99% yeah. of traders out there, they like your, what you should do is make a plan, trade the plan. But after you enter that trade, most of you will not follow the plan. You will exit early, you will enter early, yeah. or you will just do some stupid mistakes and take profit too early and stuff like that. So the, the, the availability to actually, you know, close down the laptop or whatever and go to work and let the trade do its thing, that's actually something that professional traders have a huge problem doing because they're always at, at you know, that they can watch that trade 24 hours if they want. And that's yeah. a huge problem. So what I do is... I like now, for example, I have orders here on Dodge. So if this hits, right, if, if, if the weekly open gets hit here, I'm going to get filled. If it starts moving lower and loses that trend line, you know, I'm, I'm, I might want to exit, right? But I know that going through my back testing when back testing the system, I know that when I'm back testing and when I'm forward testing, I'm I'm just letting the trade trades run through my plan. I'm not exiting early or, 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 or late or whatever. I'm just letting them run. And that is why my system, my backtesting has like 70% win rate, but live it has lower than 50. And that's because I'm here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, uh, that is... Uh quite quite mature of you to admit but it's it's true really what what lip is saying that you are going to even believe me if you have done this for more than 20 years uh, already that doesn't protect you from from making stupid mistakes uh, yeah. from taking profit too early from you know entering trades uh, just because you haven't done any trades uh, throughout the day because there was an opportunity and you say like okay i cannot go home without you know having at least one trade so this is are usually the trades you lose money on then uh, so absolutely, it's a strength to be able to close the laptop, power down your mobile app and do something else for the next eight uh, to 10 hours. In German, we have a saying, sometimes you cannot see the forest because of all of the trees. You know, there are too yeah. many trees. That's why you cannot see the forest. And I think this is yeah. very true for especially trying to trade on the lower time frame. There's so much noise going on. And uh, example here on, on, on the Stoge trade is you, you said earlier in the beginning, you didn't understand why you couldn't enter the, the trade immediately after it was uh, breaking through a resistance zone of resistance, yeah. for example. Uh, this is like typical FOMO then. You know, and yeah, because uh, what, what if what if like I I would I would the entry would be this right? I would I would enter here, yeah. and then when I, I would want to have my stop loss here, and it's like oh yeah, I'm gonna get stopped out if if it retests, right? Yeah, the, the chance so. of you getting stopped out is much higher there, and of course yeah. it's painful to watch then if the market would continue further to the upside and you didn't get the chance to enter because uh, it didn't retest the zone of support from a zone of resistance there. Yeah, that can happen, but our, you know, our human brains, uh, our animal brains uh, put too much emphasis on those occasions where that happens. Uh, something like, oh, you see, you know, every time I want to stick to my system, uh, the market just continues. I should have ended immediately. But then again, mm -hmm. if you have a trading journal and really have a trading journal, take note of all the trades you are doing over the course of maybe a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand trades, you will see that this actually happens not as often as your animal brain uh, is, is trying to tell you or trying to convince you. So yeah. really, we have to fight our own the way nature has programmed us. Let's put it like this, maybe. Yeah, I think that is very, very important. All right, so we've been, uh, it's been 40 minutes and I want to kind of recap a, a quick summary of what, like, what, what is the, right, so the most important things, uh, new, new traders, or maybe not even new traders, but people that are struggling with, um, 
uh, you know, w working while trading. And I think um, the most important thing is, first of all, planning, right? So you, 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 you should plan and uh, make time to plan. Now, if you're a high time frame swing trader, maybe you only need to plan one hour on the weekend, right? Just one hour on the weekend. That's all you need. Maybe Sunday evening, uh, if you're in a time zone where the, you're trading, maybe trading forex market and crypto, so you're waiting for the, uh, uh, you know, the 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 open on Sunday or Monday, whatever you wherever you are, and you do the planning once on the weekend you make a list and you make a plan and you set alerts and when those alerts go off you know exactly uh, what to do so honestly the the planning is probably what will take time and when i say one to two hours on the weekend that that's just two hours of work a week and i do think that that is very very possible to do so Trading does not have to be time consuming. Well, what, what's really time consuming is learning how to trade, and not actually trading when you're trading like that. So make time and 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 be disciplined about that. Every Sunday at you know 9 p.m. or whatever, I'm gonna do one hour of, of market scanning and make a list for the week to come. And be very disciplined about that. Choose a time, and then just follow uh, follow the plans. And to do that, to be able to follow the plan, you need to make you need to have a trading setup and a system that you believe in, that you're confident in trading. And that is where I think the the problem is, mm -hmm. because to have that, you need to test it. And to test it, you probably need, I think, like one hour a day at least um so especially if you want to kind of manual test it uh, you know and yeah. if you if you're not a coder that for example is uh, good in using talking about trading view pine script or something like this it's it's time consuming but worth it i, I yeah, think the key point really is also discipline like, like you just yeah. said uh, this is for me and still it is for me after all this time it's still the hardest part to maintain my discipline to follow through my, with my trading plan to not deviate from it just you know because my brain is telling me oh no no it's not going too further up you have to exit now you have to exit now this is the hardest yeah, like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at dodge here and then i'm like it's obviously like i'm looking at this and if if, if this starts moving higher i'm getting like oh you know it's not going to retest not going to retest and that's that's it, you, you you're always going to be getting those feelings that it's like um I should have entered or you get that feeling of maybe I should enter now but you know that through back testing and testing I know that if this level gets hit the the, the like the chances that this level gets hit is is pretty high but maybe it's not going to happen for this trade but there will be other trades where it will hit and I will have a better risk to reward so like yeah discipline is just so so very uh, very important like discipline and planning is is the name of the game yeah and I mean, for getting inspiration, um, take what, what Lip is teaching here and on, on, on this channel, uh, you know, take this as, as an idea, as inspiration to kind of develop also your own stuff on top. Uh, come, come visit us also at the Prime XPT Trading Academy at the YouTube channel. This is what we are doing. We are trying to help you, you know, to come up with something that suits your own style of, of taking risk of, of your own trading style. Yeah, guys, I would highly recommend you go check out the Prime XPT Trading Academy. You can find the link in the description. And also, uh, we also have a pretty uh, amazing giveaway going on in the Bourbon, so check that out as well. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend you check out the, the Prime XPT Academy. I think I think that's that's it for, for today. It's been it's been four to five minutes, and what <laughs> really to <laughs> summarize uh, all of this it's it's it comes down to to planning and having a simple uh, simple system all right Dirk I would like to thank you to thank you for this and uh, we'll uh, we'll be talking about uh, more stuff like this in future and if you guys have any if you guys have any comments on what you'd like for us to discuss could be could be anything basically regarding trading just leave a link um, leave a comment uh, below and we'll uh, look it through and see if we can find anything uh, anything interesting to cover 
Right, Dirk. Thanks for All joining. Right. And uh, for having me. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.